You are always going to be etched in Kansas history because you were not just on the call, but such a, a genuine, raw, emotional call for Wayne Seldon's dunk over Ish Wainwright. Watch Seldon's coming again. Oh, oh mercy. Oh, he hurt him. Oh, he gave him a facial. Oh, oh baby. He took the Shave and a haircut. You got to be kidding me. Save the women and children! Oh, Holy mackerel! <laughs> he got a manicure too! And uh, I, I watched that video. I think every, any Kansas fan watches that video a couple of times a year because you can tell that was not something that you had planned or written out like I'm going to say that. It was so perfect. Well, it's perfect because I was with one of the great iconic broadcasters of all time. When you work with Brent Musburger, um, there's just nothing like it. The guy's a great human being. He's a great broadcaster. And I don't know, he's probably 81 now. He's an 81-year-old kid. I did see that about a month ago, and I didn't realize how much the raw emotion was in that. You know, it's the passion that I love to bring to the game. Every, na every night. Some nights it's for Kansas and some nights it's for Iowa State. Some nights it's for Baylor. And, you know, it's what I love about the Big 12. And someone made a point to me about four years ago that I don't own the Big 12. You know, I took that really to be a, a disappointing comment. I may not own it, but I've rented it out for 18 years. There you go. This is Basketball Friends. He's Matt Tate. I'm Nick Schwartz. We have another very special guest with us today, ESPN analyst, the great Fran Frischilla. Fran, thank you for the time, man. How you doing? Happy to do it. Uh, you can obviously tell I'm in my car. I'm driving around Dallas going to watch NIT practices. <laughs> and they should know I'm right in front of a Whataburger, which will be my next stop. Anybody, anybody who's listening who knows uh, Texas cuisine knows I'm ready to go. Really, over the past couple of years, there's been more growing chatter about how much time Bill has left at Kansas, yeah. whether it's the NCAA stuff or whatever you want to point to, just the longevity of him being there. It feels like the tone has sort of changed maybe over the past year. Do you agree with that? Bill's in what, year 18, I want to say, yeah. at Kansas? The 18 season, yeah. Do you think he gets to 25? I do. I do. I really do. I mean, I've had a couple brief conversations with him. We don't go into detail about the uh, investigation. We did talk about it at the very beginning. I think Bill will see through whatever happens with the NCAA. I really do. I think he feels responsible for Kansas basketball in general. And obviously, you can tell how much he uh, he loves being a coach at Kansas. I, I, I can't predict the future. And we haven't had, again, serious conversations. But my sense is Bill will be in this for the long term. If there are sanctions that come down that are seemingly harsh, my sense is he will stick it out. I think he'll be the coach until he won't. And I believe he'll be the coach as long as he wants to be. Now, if he gets tired of coaching or gets tired of, you know, being in the spotlight at KU, then obviously things can change. And again, I don't have the expert opinion on this. My sense is he'll be the coach at Kansas for a while longer. Do you yeah. think he could he could do what you've done? Transition to the booth and, and become a broadcaster? I mean, he, when the time's ready. He would probably step in at a higher level than I am because I had to grind away. Like, honestly, ESPN doesn't know how good a job I do because I'm not... You know, I'm, I'm in the I'm in the Yankee lineup, but I'm batting seventh. Now, <laughs> now I'm hitting 30 homers, driving in 100 runs, and I don't get the same pitches. Okay, I don't see the same pitches. The guy in the eight holes hit 220, so they can pitch around me. But uh, I st I still drive in 100 runs a year because I I know how well thought I am I am a, from the basketball community. But Bill could definitely do television without a doubt. He would be like Bob Stoops or Urban Meyer. First of all, he's got the presence. He's a He's already in the Naismith Hall of Fame, which is big for networks. And the second thing is he is uh, he's a great communicator. And the third thing is he's very knowledgeable. He would be very opinionated on things that people want to hear about. So I don't think there's any doubt he would do it. I don't think he'd want to schlep around the country like I do, <laughs> you know, and do uh, 50 games a year. But yeah, I think he would make an easy transition to broadcasting. Obviously, the circumstances of this season have been weird, not ideal, but... Yeah, There's a few things, whether it's regular season tournament, that I feel like uh, being enhanced. I think the first thing is the the whole like fle idea of flex schedules of, hey, we need an yeah. extra game. It would have been awesome at the end of the year if Gonzaga and Baylor would have said, hey, we got it. We both got an empty week, which it didn't work out that way, obviously. But right. do you think there's any future where that could become something that, that coaches and teams explore a little bit more? It's possible. We saw it in football. I thought college football handled it really well, too. You know, that Coastal Carolina BYU football game was put together in about four days, and it was one of the best games of the year. Um, yeah, I think it's possible. I mean, anything, after this season, Nick, anything's possible. Seriously. You know, like I, I laugh about these football, all these ADs that schedule football games like 12, <laughs> years, and then they can't play a game next year. I think we proved that to be 
uh, <clears throat> falls. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we, I think that what this year taught us, this entire year, we're still going through it, is just to be flexible. Potentially, this could be something that does work out where you keep keep a game open on your, keep a date open on your schedule, and you save it if you want to play somebody really good, and two teams can come together like that. How, how worried are you about COVID in the tournament? I mean, we're underway, but but it's obviously still there. The worst case scenario, right, is we get to the elite eight and, and it hits somebody yeah. or something like that. Are, are, are you worried about it? You think it's lingering still? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, man plans and the virus laughs. Yeah. Yeah, you know that's where we are day to day. I mean, we're, we're seeing it. We're seeing it with teams. I mean, Virginia, what they're flying in today or flying in tomorrow and playing right. tomorrow. We all we signed up for this in uh, October, you know, and we uh, we left it in the hands of the the NCAA and Dan Gavitt, who I worked with at Providence College a long time ago. He was a grad assistant, and there's no doubt Dan is the right man for this. And yet, as as well as well planned out as this entire tournament has been. Coming in, uh, we all have to be prepared, Matt, for the unexpected. I did the TBT this summer, which is, you know, a smaller version of what we're seeing. You know, we were pretty much on pins and needles every day, and we got through it with uh, with a great tournament again. But um, this is what we've signed up for. What about the teams that have dealt with it? You've been around Scott Drew and Baylor, Shaka Smart, Texas. Now KU's going through it at the worst possible time. How much do you think that affects or, or holds them back now as you're trying to get to full strength at the most critical juncture of the year? A general answer would be big time. It affects them big time. But every team is a little different depending on the COVID cases. I think there's two ways to look at it. If, if you had a COVID pause, it means your team had COVID. If you have a COVID break, it means somebody else's team had COVID and your game was postponed or canceled. And Michigan went through a COVID break where the state of Michigan mandated that no University of Michigan winter sports team could practice or play games, I should say. Well, nobody, to my knowledge, on Michigan's team was affected by COVID itself, but Baylor had eight guys. And now Kansas is going through it with three. Um, and Texas went through it where they didn't practice pretty much for 19 days as a team. So it's a big factor. Um, there's no way Baylor's the same team they were before the seven, when they were 17 and 0. No way. Do they get it back? I think that's a big mystery. Does Kansas survive the first weekend? You know, we don't know. Texas seemed to have gotten through it. And we really don't know the cause and effect of the virus because it's all new to us. Does it take more out of one player than another? That seems to be the case. I think we're in uncharted waters. It is it is what it is. You know, we can't complain about it. I mean, Scott Drew, unfortunately, would have been a number. He's a number one seed two years in a row. And who knows? They go out early. It'll probably be largely because of the, the deal they dealt with during the season. Favorite tournament memory, whether it's one of your own or, or yeah. anything you've ever watched or seen. Has to be. I mean, I was fortunate enough to be the coach of Manhattan in 1995. Oklahoma blew through the Big Eight in February that year. New coach, Kelvin Sampson, Ryan Miner, player of the year. And we we got him in Memphis. We were lucky to get in. By the way, I got to tell this one quick story, Matt. This was pre-analytics, and we were 25 and 4. We were we were Belmont this year. We were selected, and it was a great one of the greatest highlights of my career, just being selected because we didn't win our league. We got upset in double overtime in the final. We were lucky enough on selection Sunday night, jumping around like crazy men when we got selected. Bob Frederick, the late, great Bob Frederick, took a lot of heat for our selection. He was the head of the committee that year. And we handled Oklahoma fairly easily. Kelvin and I are good friends since because I think he admired my team. And and uh, he's just a ball coach. He you beat, you beat, He's like, Bill, you beat somebody, you shake their hand. They beat you, you go down, shake their hand. Same thing. As I was walking down to shake Kelvin's hand, Bob Frederick was sitting courtside and he had taken heat all week. And I kind of looked at him and he looked at me and I gave him a wink like, you were smart. <laughs> and uh, I say that respectfully and humbly because um, that was our great moment was uh, Manhattan College beating Oklahoma, a 413 upset. Great one. Do you do a bracket? Yeah, I do. I don't have one in front of me, but I did. I, I'll tell you who my final four is. Yeah, go. that'll work. Well, it's Texas centric. It's uh, Gonzaga with Drew Timmy from Dallas, by the way. <laughs> Boy, he, and I, I'm just telling you, he would have looked great in the Kansas uniform. <laughs> no doubt. Come on, don't bring that up, Fran. We don't need to hear that. Oh, man. I don't know. I love Bill, but that's one. That, he's a, he would be Mr. Jayhawk. We know Drew. We watched him play in the same district my boys played in. So I got Gonzaga. I've got Houston, who I love. I got Baylor, who I hope gets it going. And I think Texas is going to come out of their bracket. Now, of course, I could be 0 for 4, but 
that's that's my four. And I got Gonzaga beating Houston. I think it's Houston. I got Texas in the final four as well. Nick, you can tell yours. Since Fran started <laughs> it, I'm going to tell mine. I got Texas. I got Gonzaga. I got Baylor. I got Illinois. But I got Texas, Illinois in the title game with the Illini winning. Okay. Ooh, that's a good one. Right? That's the one. That's the I, only way hey, you win money. <laughs> I got yeah, exactly. See, I went in on hot teams. And, and I think yeah. there's a difference, and maybe you can speak to this, Fran. There's a difference between a team that's hot and a team that's actually improved. So I yeah. have Gonzaga, Yukon, Purdue, and Illinois. Like Yukon to me, like Oklahoma State is hot. I'm not sure how much better they were. Maybe you would disagree. Like yeah. whereas Yukon, yeah. I feel like that's a team that was raising their level of play by the end of the season. So I went all in on it. Your hypothesis is a good one. The problem is that every year all of our hypotheses just blow up. <laughs> <laughs> 